So we are reading from the book of First Samuel. First Samuel chapter eight. Verse 19 to 22. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 19 to 22, and it reads The title says, Israel's request for a king granted. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No. But we are determined to have a king over us, so that we also may be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to their, their voice and set a king over them. Samuel then said to the people of Israel, each of you return home. Let us pray. Father, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Your word is everlasting. Your word is solid. Your word is secure. Your word is a rock upon which we stand. And so, Lord, we declare that our ears are open to you, Holy Spirit, speak into our hearts, O oh Lord, and give us the grace. Give us the grace, Lord, to hear, to understand, to live by it, and to do as you expect us to do. We can do nothing of our own. We need you, and that's why we sit at your feet, Lord Jesus, and we listen to you. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Hear and grant our prayer. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Okay, so I welcome you today, the 3rd of September, 2017, and um, the title of the message of today is The Power of Praise and Worship, The Power of Praise and Worship. So first of all, I want to remind us that the mouth that we use to praise God with, we should refrain from using the same mouth to speak what does not glorify him. We read part of Psalm 119 this morning, and the same Psalm, verse 64 says, The earth is filled with your love, O Lord, teach me your decrees. The earth is filled with the love of God. I know when bad things happen, people want somebody to blame it on. So because they have no regard for God, they start blaming it on God. And probably they don't have regard for God because they don't know who he is. But those of us who have received the privilege to know him, we have to learn to speak what glorifies, glorifies God and not use the same mouth that we use for praising God to speak what does not glorify him. Because the earth, Psalm 119 verse 64, the earth is filled with your love, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. So we want to open our hearts for his teaching this morning. So... I know the passage I read doesn't really talk about the power of praise and worship, but I just, you know, cited on that so that we can see how when people are misguided, they tend to believe that the power to lead a successful life is in their strength and their human ability. And so they miss God and God's help. The children of Israel asked Samuel to, to give them a king. The, while the word of God says we should not allow 
his counsel to depart from us or from our children. We need to remember that God is God and we should live by his, by his word. So, but these people were misguided. They did not understand what they were doing. And they started to ask for what they shouldn't have asked for. In the beginning, still, you know, try, I'm trying to lay some foundations here. In the book of Joshua, the, right at the beginning of Joshua, verse, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate. That's the first one. Meditate on the, on the word. Meditate in, in it day and night. That means unceasingly. Meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do. So when you meditate on the word of God, it will be part and parcel of you. And so that whatever you do is an outcome of that word. Meditate in it day and night. Whether you are awake or you are asleep, let your subconscious be on the word of God. So that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. That's the outcome. When you meditate, you observe it, you do it, then automatically the outcome, you, you will make your way prosperous. You see, people don't meditate on the word, but they seek prosperity. Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. That's Joshua 1 verse 8. When you know the counsel of God, then you are not misled. These people were misled. So instead of them asking God for a leader, they went to Samuel, we want to be like others. When human beings fail to do as prescribed, like in this verse from Joshua, then they are naturally misled and life becomes a struggle. And the, like I said, the topic is praise and worship. That is what our life should be. When we meditate on the word of God, we are, we are filled like the word, like, like that one, Psalm 119 verse 64 says, the, the earth is filled with your love. Then you experience God's love. Then you experience God's peace by meditating on the word of God. So this is a lesson before I even start. That is a lesson for us who call ourselves Christians. The word is a lamp unto our feet. Yeah? So as Christians, we are the light. We carry the lamp. We carry revelation. We carry light. So we, we've got to shine. We've got to shine so that others can see that light and follow us. We have the counsel of God. So we should not be following the world. The world should be following us. God's instructions are clear cut. You see, the world wants political correctness. There's nothing like political correctness in God's instructions. The word of God, God's instructions are clear cut. Meditate on this word day and night. Observe it. Do it according to what you are learning, what you have heard, what is written. Then you will be prosperous in your ways. And you will have good success, not just any kind of success. Because you are constantly in God's counsel. You want to do something, that little voice says, uh-uh, don't do that. You want to go to the right, that little voice says, I don't think that's good. Because your ear is tuned into the right frequency, you hear it. That's how you have good success. If you live by it, then you have good success. That is a natural outcome. As Christians, our garments should be pure white. If, it, if somebody wears white and walks far away, you can see them from a distance. So we 
must be pure in our ways. Easily spotted. Yes, when you are easily spotted, you know, the enemy can easily spot you as well. That is fine. Because your garment is a garment of light. They, who can pierce light? Nobody can pierce through light. They will see you, but they cannot do you anything. Because he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They will see you, but they can do you nothing. A thousand at my right side, ten thousand at my left. Only with my eyes will I see and behold the, the, the punishment of the wicked. So don't bother about what the enemy is doing. You do what you are supposed to do. Christians are problem solvers. Therefore, we should be easily detected. We are here to solve problems, whether the people want it or not. That's why we need to be easily seen and accessible. We need to have the counsel of God. Otherwise, we would not be representing Christ in the earth realm properly as we should. Let your light shine. Christ was easily spotted wherever he went. Even when he, he tried to, to go to some mountain place, you know, some hideaway. Before he got there, the people had already, they are there waiting for him. Because he had something that they needed. That's how we should, how, you know, the life of a Christian should be. So how can we live this Christ-like life is a question. By staying in the word. That's the answer. Staying in the word. Meditate on it day and night. Do as you are told. Observe it. Do it. And that light, that the word, because the word is a lamp, it, shi it shines from inside of you. You stay in the word and remember that we are created for praise and worship. So you give God glory with your life, with your substance, with everything you do, with every word you say. When you, when you stay in the word, the word and you become one. Jesus said, let them be one as you and I are one. Those were one of his last prayers, if you read the gospel of, of, of John. He says, if you believe, I, I might as well go there if I can quickly find it. You know, John, I think John 14. It says, if you believe in, in my word, uh, can I find it quickly? Whoever does, no, 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 no. I might, I'm not, I'm not sure now. If you believe in my word, he says, I will make myself manifest unto you. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that when, when the word is in you and you are part of the word, then you, you are, Christ will manifest himself through you. So that in everything you do, you are representing him. And that's why I say, when you ask in my name, I will do it, so that the Father might be glorified in the Son. If my word is in you and you in the word, hmm. if you love me, okay, I think John, John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandment, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. No, no, that's not where I wanted to go. I might find it. I think it's the version I'm reading, so it's quite not easy to see what I'm trying to look for. So, but what I'm trying to say is that the world and us has to be one. If we are Christ's representatives, if we keep his word, if we do his word, whoever loves me will keep my word. And he will hear my voice. So we, we have to be part and parcel. Jesus, you know, that Christ-like life. So the question is, how can we live this Christ-like life? By staying in the world, by being one with Christ, by doing his will. If the earth is full of the love of God, then our response is praise and worship. 
because he has given us everything we need so that we don't have to, to, to worry about what to eat. And Jesus makes it very clear. That's in Matthew. He says, do not worry. Do not worry about what you are going to eat because if you, if, if my life is made manifest in you, then you cannot worry because if, if, if the earth is truly full of the love of God and you walk in the love of God and you walk according to God's will, then everything will work out. It, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it looks like around you because remember David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Does it mean that he was never hungry? No, but he knew that there was provision. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. So a natural response to God's goodness is praise and worship. When you understand that God's plan for you is good, not what the enemy is trying, trying to throw around or show you or, or, you know, like the illusion he is giving. So we need to understand the ways of God, the plan of God. My plans for you are good and not evil. And once we know this, our natural response is praise and worship. Our natural response is to use our life, our mouth, our substance to, to worship him. You know, going back to the, to the passage that we read. When Samuel had become old, and unfortunately, his sons had not chosen to follow his, his footsteps. Instead of the people of Israel to go to Samuel and say, Old man, look, you have led us, you have judged us, you have been a perfect you know, leader for us all these years. Unfortunately, your sons have not followed in your footsteps. They, are, they have been perverted and whatever. Pray, someone pray to God for us, with us, so that God can send us another leader like you. Yeah? Instead, what did they ask for? Give us a king so that we can be like others. Are you like others? That's what I want us to understand. As a Christian, you are not like others. You are not like every other person. Don't try to be like others. Read it there for yourself. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 20. Oh, let's go back to 19. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. That's, you know, previously I might, I might go there too. The people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, emphatically, no. But we are determined to have a king over us. When God told them from the beginning, I am your king, and God has been lead leading them without a king all those years. God says, I am your king. And God has been faithful. The earth is full of the love of God. God was faithful to them. But they said in verse 12, uh, 20, so that we also may be like other nations. Did God set you apart to be like others? God did not set you and me apart to be like others. So this book is there for us to read it, meditate on it, learn from it. We want to be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. That's what they, they wanted. While well, God wanted something else for them. They knew that God was leading them through Samuel all those years. Instead, they wanted a king for themselves so that we also may be like other nations. No, you are not supposed to be like other nations. That's why I say the word of God is clear cut. There's no political correctness. There's no, no gray lines. Do it or leave it. 
Why did they want to, to, to be like other nations? So that they can find somebody to blame when something goes wrong. That's what people do. They just, they lose a, a war. Oh, it's the fault of the president. It's the fault of the prime minister. It's the fault of the king. That, that's all they want. That's all they want. Because they do not want to bother to do right in the sight of a holy God. They knew that the God that is their king is holy. And he expects clear-cut lines. He expects holiness. Go back a bit. Uh, if, I hope you have marked that Samuel. If you go back to 1 Samuel chapter 6. You know, just turn a few pages backwards in your Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 6 verse 20 says, Then the people of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? You see, because their hearts, they were not ready to cleanse they are to, to clean up their acts. So they wanted to put somebody to, uh, else that they can blame when something goes wrong. The world just wants to blame. Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? To whom shall he, to whom shall he go so that we may be rid of him? They, they, they did not want to, to, to be holy. They did not want to clean up their acts. They wanted somebody they can put in front. Same thing they did to Moses. They heard the voice of God. No, Moses, you, we cannot hear that. You go listen and come and tell us. Then we will do everything you say. Uh -huh. In chapter 7, if you just flip the page... Verse 4, Samuel is saying to the same people, If you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the asteroid from among you. Direct your heart to the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Serve him only. Do away with your foreign gods, with your idol worshipping, with your, you know, strange ways. Get rid of these Baals and asteroids that you are worshipping. Serve this holy God only. His, his instructions are clear cut. When you do that, he will deliver you. He will save you out of the hand of, the, of your enemies. In this case, the Philistines. So for a moment, like we always know, they repented and called on God. And God defeated the Philistines. And if you check uh, verse 12 of, of that uh, chapter 7, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. So when God had defeated the Philistines, because for that moment they, they repented, threw away their, their Baals and Ashtoreth, their idol gods. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Jeshanah, and named it Ebenezer. For he said, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Once we do what God wants, there is deliverance. Once we do as God wants, there is good success. Thus far, okay, you guys have heard, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So let us put a stone for worship. Let us put something to remember. Our life should be a life of praise and worship. Once you do what God says and, he, and he's constantly 
delivering you. You see, the, you see trouble like so close. But because your mind is set on God, God saves you from, from that trouble. What is the, the natural thing you do? <gasps> Thank you, Jesus. Because that's what our lives are supposed to be. Life of praise and worship. So I show us a very good example of what praise and worship can do. So let us turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. This is the approach that we need to take, to live, to understand what it means to, to live a life, or to understand the power of praise and worship. Listen to what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat's prayer and victory. Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. So I'm reading 2 Chronicles 20 verse 5. Yeah? Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our ancestors, are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Remember the other people wanted a king to rule over them so that they can be like other nations. Yeah? But this is somebody who understands that you, you cannot be a child of God and want to be like other nations because your God already rules over the kingdoms of the nations. Are we seeing the link now? So he says, God, do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Remember the earth is filled with the love of God. He rules over all. When we let him, when we don't turn aside and go and follow idols of Ashtoreth and Baal, because people do that, and when things go wrong, they blame God. When what they were worshipping, what they were looking at, you know, towards was never God. Why are you blaming God for your disaster when you never acknowledged him in the first place? So Jehoshaphat acknowledges, unlike his people before him. Do you not rule over all the kings of kingdoms of the nation? I am, I am enthroning you in my prayers. In my prayers, I, I put you on your position as Lord, as King, as ruler of all, by me declaring with my mouth that you are God and the Lord of all, the Almighty. That's what Jehoshaphat was doing. In your hands, I'm reading further. In your hands are power and might. So that no one is able to withstand you. What did the other people say? Who can stand before this holy God? You see? It is the eye with which you see it. How you position yourself. Who, how you position your God. The other one said, oh, God is too holy. We can't go near him. Jehoshaphat said, that's the God I want. Because he rules in holiness. And he rules single-handedly. Because I enthrone him. I allow him to be Lord in my life. So he continues verse 7. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7. Did you not, O Lord our God... Drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham. They have lived in it and in it have built you a sanctuary for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house. And cry out to you in our distress and you will hear 
and save. You see, these are the people that understood their God. Not the ones that want somebody to blame when things go wrong. Jehoshaphat said, if disaster comes, because disaster is bound to come, but who are you running to for help? Who, who are we running to for help when disaster comes? Do we want to blame the president, the prime minister, the head of department of this and that? Or have we set our eyes so much on the Lord that in any situation we run to him? Meditate on this word day and night. That's what Joshua said. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. That means your mind is set on the Lord. When you are walking on the road, when you, when you are sitting to eat, tell it to your children. Hand it down from generation to generation. Observe it. Do according to it. And then your way will be prosperous and you will have good success. He said people want prosperity and good success outside of God, outside of doing God's will, outside of obeying his word. Well, Jesus himself even reiterated, seek ye first the kingdom. When you seek the things of God, then all these other things will be added to you. Amen? So, and when all these things are added, what is the, the result? Praise and worship. And on the other hand, by you praising him, acknowledging him, worshiping him, even in your distress, like Jehoshaphat, he comes and he hears and he saves. And then you continue to give him the praise and the worship. So it goes round and round. It's a relationship. You give to God. God gives to you. You take from God. You know, God takes praise and worship from you. That's what it is. That's the relationship. And every other thing is secondary. First of all, we must fix our gaze on the Lord. Like Jehoshaphat did. He was in trouble. He was in trouble at that moment. He did not sit down and say, God, why did you allow this to happen to us? I thought you were God. Why then do you allow disaster to come? No. He went, he stood in the house of the Lord and declared God's omnipotence, God's authority. Are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Is not power and might in your hand? Why are, who, who is this, who are these uncircumcised Philistines that should come against your own people? We acknowledge you as God. Father, rule, reign over us, show our enemies. That we have a holy God, a righteous God, a God that is full of love, power, authority. Everything is in him. That's what Jehoshaphat was doing. And the funny thing that happened after. Because he acknowledged God like that, he raised God up. He, he worshipped God even in trouble. He acknowledged God even in his distress. God spoke through a Levite, a son of, of Asaph. And he said, listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. So he mentioned him personally. Thus says the Lord, do not fear or be dismayed at this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. You see, once you acknowledge God, he takes over. He does not take over when you do not acknowledge him. You cannot say God is sovereign, so he rules over everything. Of course, he does not rule over everything. He's waiting for you. 
to, to, to acknowledge him, to put him in his position. Then he will rule. Before then, he does not, people. He is waiting for you and me to put him in his position as God. He has already done it and he is sitting and waiting for you to claim it, to acknowledge it and speak it. Because when you speak it, then it happens. That's how he created heaven and earth. You speak it. God, you are my God. I refuse for this heathen, for these uncircumcised Philistines to come and, 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 and destroy my life. I acknowledge you as my God. Then God will say, that's my child. And like he did to the Assyrians, one angel routed 185,000 men in one night. One angel. God doesn't need, he just needs you to agree that he's God. He just needs you to acknowledge his power. And this is Old Testament. Talk less of New Testament, resurrection power, blood of Jesus, name of Jesus. You don't fold your hands and sit and say, after all, God is God. What will be, will be. No, what will be, will not be if you don't speak it. If you don't acknowledge him, if you don't decree it, what will be, will not be. Because he's waiting for you to make it be. Because Jehoshaphat acknowledged, God, God put his spirit in this Levite. And he said, then, then God spoke, do not fear or be dismayed. Don't worry, my child, because you, you understand that I am God, then I'm going to act as God on your behalf. That's what it is. Don't worry about this great multitude. Don't worry about these people who, who, who are proud. I will clip their wings in a moment. The battle is not yours. I'm taking over. And because he now knew that, Jehoshaphat now knew that, you know, God says, tomorrow, go down against them. So you still have to do something. You can't sit down and say, God is God. No. God said, go down against them. They will come up by, so God is now giving directions. They will come up by the ascent of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the valley before the wilderness of Jeruel. This battle is not for you to fight because you have acknowledged me. He, he says, just take your position. Stand, stand still. We have to stand with God. We have to acknowledge God. We have to give him his due respect. You don't just sit down and blame God for things that happen if, when you have not acknowledged that he is powerful then you will not see his power. God says, go there and stand. We, we see that in Ephesians as well. This is Old Testament. Second Chronicles 20 verse 17. This battle is not for you to fight. Take your position. Stand still. And see the victory of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. You see, we still have to do our part. But we are doing it with the knowledge that we are already victorious because of who we have on our side. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Jerusalem and Judah, bowed down with his face to the ground. That's worship. The king bowed with his face to the ground. No pride where God is. Know who you are before God. The king bowed down with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites 
of the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. That is praise and worship. That is the power of praise and worship. And then as God instructed, verse 20, they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets. That means believe what God has spoken. Just believe it. Take the word of God as it is. Because it's clear cut. You may not understand it. And most of the time we don't. Because God's ways are not our ways. But it says just believe. Just believe it. Believe. Well, if you know that this is a prophet of God, if you know you pray to God and God sent you an answer through a prophet, just believe. And you will be established. Verse 21. When he had taken counsel, you see, this is holy counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy splendor. The other ones were we're happy to run away from this holy God. Who can stand before this holy God? See the difference? That is the difference in attitude when you understand. They praised him in holy splendor. They haven't won the war yet. You see the trick? They haven't won the war yet. They believed and they started singing. They started praising. They started worshiping, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And now, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush. Not before, as because they trusted and they were praising God even in their distress. The Lord set an ambush against the Ammonites, the Moabites, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. For the Ammonites and the Moabites attacked the inhabitants of Mount Seir. So they started attacking each other, destroying them utterly. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they all helped to destroy one another. You see confusion in the camp of the enemy? Because you praise God. Because you hand it, you put God in his throne. Just by praising him. And that you praise him because you acknowledge, yes, I have not seen the victory yet, but because I know who my God is, I know that the victory is already sure. So you praise him. Not sit down and complain. Why this? God, why this? I think I've been serving you. Why, 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 why is this happening to me? No, 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 no. Keep, keep believing. Keep trusting. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. You are not established before you believe. First you believe and then you'll be established. Because as they began to sing and praise, the Lord rose from his throne, sent his angels, set ambush against the enemy. And when Judah came to the watchtower, verse 24, of the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude. There were corpses, corpses lying on the ground. No one had escaped. That is when God fights. That's when God fights. When God when you are fighting, you know, they will fight you and you will bleed and they will bleed and some will escape. No, they were corpses. No one escaped. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take the booty from them, they found livestock in great numbers, goods, clothing, precious things. You see, when you seek first the kingdom, all these things will follow after. 
not the other one before. Precious things which they took for themselves until they could carry no more. That is the power of praise and worship even in your distress. They spent three days just taking the booty. Instead of fighting, instead of fighting, they were collecting. You see, when you say, you know, every stolen goods, everything the enemy took, you take it back. They took three days taking the booty because of its abundance. That's, that's when you see God at work. And then on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, that place has been called the valley of Baraka to this day. So what, what are we saying? Don't run away from God in your trouble. Run to God. Don't try to figure it out with your human ability. Seek God's counsel. Let God direct you like he directed. And when he says something, even though it does not make sense, just do it. Just do it because you believe. Why, why would, you know, Jehoshaphat had sent out people to praise instead of an army? God said, you, you don't have to lift a finger. This battle is not yours, it's mine. People went out praising and they won the war. They went out singing, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. That's what we, we saw in that Psalm 119. The love of God, the earth is filled with the love of God. There's no way you turn that you will not find the love of God. But if, you, if your eyes are not focused, if your attention is not in seeking the things of God, you won't see it, you will miss it. So we have to understand that wherever we turn, the, the, the heaven declares the glory of the Lord and the firmament shows its handiwork. When, whether you wake up, whether you are going, whatever you do, the presence of God is there, the love of God is there. And we should not miss it because of distress. We should not miss it because of, you know, too much activity. We should be those singers wearing white, marching on, praising God, leading the troop. Knowing that we are walking into our victory. Amen. We are walking constantly wearing these pure white robes. Joy in our heart, praise in our mouth, focusing on God and who he is, what he can do. And then others will follow suit. And everything we need will be supplied. Because if God can fight a battle for us, why will he not supply our needs? If he can do the difficult one, what's left? I always say, if Jesus died for you, what, what, what do you want him to do again? Somebody has already laid his life down for you. What is more difficult that he, that he cannot do? So let us remember, our duty is to praise and worship God in every situation. And when we do that, we will see the power of God in our lives. Amen? The power of praise and worship. It's deliverance, it's joy, it's good success, it's prosperity, everything is in it. When we set our minds on seeking God and worshiping him and honoring him, acknowledging him, then every other thing will be granted in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, we honor you, we worship you, we bless your name, thank you for reminding us, not that we did not know, that you love us. And so you keep reminding us, like any good parent who will train their children, 
and keep saying the same thing again and again. The children may forget, they laugh, they think, oh, what's daddy talking about, what's mommy talking about? But because of the love, because you, 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 the parents see the danger, they keep telling the child. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us again today. Especially as we enter this uh, uh, last four months of the year. The dark season, the, the weather is already turning, you know, quickly dark. Father, we pray that we will walk in your light and we will be the light that others will follow and we will walk in praise and worship so that we will be prosperous in all our ways and we will have good success and we will give glory to you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name.